Good morning, everybody. How are you doing this day? I'm Michael DeSilvis from New Hunter Church of Christ. Hope everybody's had a lively week. It's been a really hot, miserable week, but then we had a last you know, Friday and Saturday here in Virginia. We had a really nice. We had heat, but we had less humidity, so that was good. The title of the sermon is the put is the proof in the pudding this morning. I know it's funny, but really you might like pudding. But this is this is talking about biblical stuff. Is the proof in the pudding? We're going to be looking at Romans. Have this in readiness. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. Then we're going to jump down verses 9 to 21 of that same chapter. Okay. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2 says this. I appeal to I I be I appeal to you therefore, all bre all you brethren. I beg you, in view of all of the mercies of God that are bestowed on us and on you, to make a decision and a dedication of all your bodies that are present in all your members and also facilities. I mean, places where you meet, that all this stuff would happen here, preclude here. Okay? Facilities as a living sacrifice. As your body is a living sacrifice under God is what it's saying here. Bodies that are devoted, that are consecrated, I mean they're one. I mean that will be pleasing to God. Which is your reasonable or uh, rational and intelligent service and also spiritual worship. Verse number two. Do not be conformed to this very world, or this age for that matter, that's fashioned after and adapted to its eternal superficial customs or culture. Because you know, it's not eternal here. It's only temple here in this world. But where we're going is eternal. Amen. It says, but be transformed. Meaning changed by the entire renewal or through the entire renewal of your mind. And by its new ideas. Or is it idols? No, it's ide ideals or idols. And its new attitude, meaning you have a change that's taking place because you're born again, baptized believers, what it says there, folks. So what you may prove for yourselves, what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It says, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his very sight for you. Okay, now we're going to go back You'll see. We're going to go back and jump to Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Here we go. All right, verse 9. Let your, okay, let your very love be sincere, meaning real. Let it be a real kind of thing. Don't just go through the motions here, right? All right. Hate what is evil in your sight. Okay, loathe. All ungodliness it means stay away from it. Get away from me. Get out of there. That's what it's saying. Turn in horror. Okay? It means stay away from it. From all wickedness. It says, but hold fast to that of which is good. I like that. It's reassuring because that's what Paul tells us. Love your brothers. It means love your brothers and sisters. Love all the brethren with brotherly love, showing brotherly affection. As members of one body, meaning one family, and giving, giving, pre giving precedence and showing honor to one another, as you would in the faith. It says, never lag in any zeal and in earnestness, okay, endeavors. It says, be a glow, meaning, you know, show happiness. And be burning with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that's what it's talking about here. That's serving the Lord that comes from within you. 
Okay, rejoice to the Lord and exalt him in hope and be steadfast and patient in suffering or long suffering I would say there and retribution or, tri or, tribu or tribulations that come your way. It says be be content. Be constantly in prayer, okay? Contribute to the very needs of God's people. That means sharing in the necessities of all the saints. It means pursue the very practice of hospitality. Hear that? Hospitality. Bless all those who have persecuted you or said false things about you or made up things about you because of their mental instability or maybe said things because they're just mean, but still bless them anyway. And, and who are even being cruel to you in their very attitude and through their deeds and through their mouth and through what they say to other people that aren't true in and towards you or even towards you to other people. Bless and do not curse them, for God will do that. That's his department, not ours. God will judge them and will definitely give them their reward, believe me. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing, okay? Share share with others that great joy. Okay? And weep with all those who mourn. Share with others who are in grief over death, over hardships, etc., etc. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be causing divisions. Don't be yelling at people. Don't be causing rumors or lying or stirring up malice among your neighbors. Okay? Do not be haughty, or that means arrogant, thinking you're better, think you got one over somebody. Okay. All right, now, abolish high mindedness. Like, don't think you're above everybody else, think you got it all. Because when you do that, that's when you're going to fall. Okay. Don't think you're exclusive, like you're better and nobody can come to your church. Some churches have that attitude. And those that have that attitude, I want to say to you, churches that are like this, you need to stop that right now. Because all people are welcome to your body. You don't just cater to one class of people. I don't cater to one class. I cater to all classes. That's what Jesus did. So we're all here to serve one another. It doesn't matter what class we're from. All right? But readily adjust yourself to the people who you're around and the things that you have. And give yourselves to humble tasks. Like help people who are in need, who need help things get things done. You know, never uh, overestimate yourself. Don't overdo it. You know, don't say, don't do things you can't do or deliver. Always say you can do it. And if you can't do it, then say no. Be wise in your own conceits, okay? All right, 17. Repay no one evil for evil, meaning don't revenge those who have revenged you. Don't take thought for what is honest and proper let me say that again i said it wrong but take thought for what is honest and proper this was testing you know i just read it wrong and noble and good aiming to be ab far above any reproach meaning don't fall into temptation okay in the sight of everyone always set a good example and really mean it when you set it okay if possible as far as it depends on you Live at peace with everyone, even, like we said, those who do you wrong and do curse you. All right? Beloved, never avenge yourselves, okay? But leave the way always open for God, for God's very wrath, meaning he'll take care of your problems. Don't you try to handle them yourself. For it is written in the Bible that vengeance is mine, I will repay or requit, says the Lord. That's a Deuteronomy uh, 32, verse 35, too, as well. It comes from there. All right, 20. But if your enemy is hungry, says, give him a bite to eat. But if he or she is thirsty, give him or her a drink. It says, for by so doing, you will keep burning coals upon their very heads. Proverbs 25, verse 21 and 22 talk about that. It's a parallel. Last verse of this chapter for today in chapter 12. 
do not let yourselves be overcome by evil, but overcome the master evil by doing good. I like that. It's very reassuring there where Paul ends in chapter 12. All right. So the proof is in the pudding. Let's go to God in prayer before we begin this morning. Dear Lord, Father God, with our heads humbly bowed and our eyes closed, help that we can get this sermon out so people can learn something and that it will help people who are in need and those people that are causing trouble that they will have peaceful spirits and that they'll be able to have calm spirits and not be able to do disturbances and cause problems with the neighbors in the communities where they live and in the churches where they go to that they'll have a peaceful spirit and a peaceful mind and that the thoughts won't be racing in their head and they can be calm lord please be with me as the speaker and the teacher the preacher this morning so I can shed light as the shepherd of the flock here at New Hunter Church of Christ. Please be with Lori Carter with, as she goes in for surgery this week for her cancer. Please be with my brother and colleague and also friend Will Meeks as he goes and preaches at his church this morning. I hope he does a good job. Knocks him over with the word of God and that they really like his message, Lord. And I'm sure he'll do a wonderful job, Lord. Thank you for everything you do. Please prepare our hearts and minds for communion. And Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. So we're going to take communion now before we go into our lesson. I probably didn't say it, but I'll say it. We always do communion first because that way it stays cold. Everybody pass the cups around. And then you've got a minute to go get your stuff. You can stop this and go get your things if you don't have it together. You can get grape juice or you can get soda or you can get grape soda or you can get Kool-Aid or you can have the real thing. That's what we have here, the real thing, or wine. Just pour a little bit in a glass. Get yourself an unleavened cracker. It can be a saltine cracker. doesn't matter what kind it is. As long as it's unleavened, that just means it has no yeast in it. And uh, you can even use a piece of bread if you don't have it. Whatever you have, that'll work. You can suffice, and God's not going to send you to hell for not having the right emblems. But you should use these things, because this is what they used back in the day. But, you know, you use wine, too. But just drink a little bit of it, just a tiny bit. You just a little tiny, like a sip. And uh, that's all you really need for communion. You know, you don't want to be drunk because that wouldn't be communion um, so as I said they used wine that was 1% back then for the communion it wasn't like the wine like we have today but anyway the bread well unleavened bread represents his flesh boy that was big <laughs> and uh, that means he's presently symbolically with us not just during times of communion but all through your life all through every waking moment when you become a Christian you take the Lord's Supper and observe it but you want to observe it with a clean mind and a clear heart and conscience. So when we go before the Lord and we take this, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me today so that you'll take this and it will bless you and, and you'll know that Jesus is with you because of remembering what he did for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. So let's partake this to remind us that he's symbolically and really here with us. We're two or more gathered, whether we're online or whether we're here today at New Under Church of Christ, or whether we're outside as a neighbor listening in uh, this morning. Let's take the communion, let's take the bread of life, and know that he's presently with us. Let's partake. Just like the vine of life, the bread also is the flesh, and also the life that goes with the vine of life. I kind of combined them together. But this has the power, this is the blood that symbolizes the blood that was shed on the cross, or poured out on the cross, depending on how you look at it. It has the power to take away all your sins. All sins but blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's unpardonable. But all the other sins are all forgivable except for blasphemy. That's cursing the Holy Spirit. So don't do that. Alright? And of course, uh, if you have any sins, you can't take the Lord's Supper if you haven't repented of them first. It's always important to repent to the Lord of sins that you have done before you take the Lord's Supper. So if you haven't, pray real quick and ask them to forgive you. And then you may to partake if you haven't done so. Okay? Now, as we know this, we'll take this one day in a new in the house of the Lord up in heaven, not in Jerusalem. Like some people teach millennials think the Lord's going to come here and literally live here and reign for a thousand years. That's not true. That's what the millennials teach. But the Bible says the thousand year reign is already happened of what the millennials call is when the New Testament church came into power. That's when the Old Testament covenant was abolished and the New Testament was then put in power to complete or fulfill the prophecy of what was in all the prophets 
in the Old Testament and also what was prophesied in the beginning of the New Testament. And that's why we have a New Testament church that started really in Acts, and that's when it really fully went into power after the day of the Pentecost when it actually happened, according in chapter 2 of Acts. So we, that's where we get that delineation from, and that's where we know that's where the church about is where it really actually began. So this that's why we take the communion to remind us of the whole thing of what Jesus has done, the death, burial, resurrection of his body, and what he's done in his life and ministry here. And as a reminder for us that one day we will too be resurrected just like Christ was. So let's take this and remember that this is the vital life and what his promises are. And at the end we will be with him in eternal life as is promised in the Bible. Let's partake. Do some remembrance of after Jesus as we partake. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Please bless this sermon. Please be with me. Help me be a sharp and alert. Thank you for the time, the talent, the ability, and the resources to be able to put this lesson together. Please help it come out real good and that people will understand it and be able to go away with something good. Please uh, be with the people today. Help more people to subscribe to this channel and that people will be moved to donate to us. We really do need them at this time. Thank you for everything that you do, Lord. And Jesus may, I pray in your humbly, humbly I pray as a soldier for you, Lord. Amen. And a sojourner. Amen. All right. As we start the sermon, we are often accustomed to thinking that worship as simply being prayers, some songs we offer up to the Lord, some Bible reading and meditation, preaching, offering and taking communion on every Sunday, right? In the morning when we come to church, right? Well, that is true. A lot of genuine worship happens that way when it's really done in the Lord in mind but God is also pleased with that if it really matters to him you know that's when he's pleased with it when it matters to him and if it's really given to him you know from the heart from the soul from the spirit and you know, it's really truly divine is God really likes that it's pleasing to him and it, it's very important for us to adjust our perspective on reality. And what I mean by that is on what is right and what is wrong. And on the permanent and also the temporary. Now, it puts us in helpful rather than hurtful company. It says, but Paul often says here, says to us, that here is your spiritual worship. It says, do not be conformed to the very patterns of this world, but be transformed, and that starts in your very mind. That's how you get transformed by it. It's where it's in, it's in, it's in your mind. And that transformation works itself out in a body that is offered as a living sacrifice unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul also was not one to leave things in the category of lazy or hazy uh, generalities here no here's what I really mean here love like you are supposed to in the body of Christ and in and exercise it towards one another in and outside the church and in your communities exercise the kind of grace that you would have received like as a living sacrifice unto Jesus Christ like he's given it to you freely. That brings us to our first point this morning. Exercise extremely active grace in the church family. That's so important. Be devoted to one another in, in brotherly and sisterly love. You know, honor one another above yourselves. Always put others first. Kyle, so uh, Kyle Sawyer uh, who, is, who a star football player once wrote a book that's entitled I Am Third. That's the idea. Okay? Now I have an acrostic that I was always taught. In church, I heard a preacher say there's an acrostic that you can remember in life. It's called Joy, J-O-Y. You know what it stands for? Jesus first, others second, and yourself dead last. I love that. 
but it's really true and it rings and resounds to my mind. It's perfect for the sermon this morning. It says, a single issue that assaults our country more today than any other is probably this. I am devoted to only me. Or, it's my rights. Or, to thumb the thunder with you. You know, most likely it is the single issue that causes the most pain and harm in the church body today. You know, I need the attention. I want the spotlight. I want it to be done this way. You ever heard that attitude? Me, mine, or I, mine. You know, self kind of attitude, controlling attitudes, you know, where everything is all mine. I, not, it's always I being used in conversations. Instead of saying that, we'd always be thinking about we and ours and thinking about sharing and not talking like that or being like that. All right, share with God's people who are in need. Meaning those who are in church or outside the church, for that matter. Be alert and do it before they even ask you for any help. If you know they need help, just don't hesitate to help them. If you have the means of any kind, help them. If you're not using something and they need it, simply give it to them, you know? All right. Do it even if the need comes from their own careless decisions that they make or choices that they do. Don't be so quick to judge because if you were in the same boat, you would want them to help you. Because a lot of you do have things happen to you. I know there's some prideful preachers out there that say, Oh, a lot of it's their fault. A lot of it's their fault. They caused it all on their self. Yeah, they brought it all on their self. And that's not how we're supposed to be in the body of Christ. Sometimes we need to help people and not be so harsh to judge because we may be in the same predicament one day. And those words you say, you might have to eat. You better think about that. Practice hospitality. It's not just for the needy, you know. It's also to keep others from becoming emotionally needy. Okay. Also, rejoice with all those who rejoice. It says even if they have more success, or at least you think they appear to have more success than you do, still rejoice with them anyway. Don't be jealous or envious, because that's not helping. Mourn with all those who mourn. Even if you have not been treated that way yourself. All right. Number E, be willing to associate yourself with all those who are in low positions in life, meaning they're poor or handicapped or homeless. You know, those are low positions. You might consider to be low, but really not low, but that's how people look at it. Meaning you're quick, ready to uh, associate up. Meaning you'll, 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 you won't let the stereotypes and all get in the way. You'll just go and help people no matter what. Because that's what we're really here to do, is to serve people in all capacities, no matter what position they're at in life. Whether poor, whether mediocre, whether they're handicapped, whether they're retarded, whatever they are. Whether if they're leprosy, whatever we are. If they're gay, lesbian, if you can talk to them to convert them to get out of that horrible sin and get to, get to heterosexual, you can convert them. That's the way we should be serving. That's the way we should be. Now how about finding a way to meet on a common ground with a person, you know, with people who may be looking at themselves as inferior or feeling humiliated, like when they're around you, you know, if they have an inferior or low self-esteem, maybe you can help meet them to make them feel better about themselves. That's what Jesus did. That's what he taught us. That's what we should be doing. I mean, exercise a focused grace, okay, that is towards all those from whom you are separated from, meaning outside of Christ. Try to show some understanding. Just like Jesus showed some understanding and grace when he had you come in as a gift, he gave it to you. Just be graceful to other people so they can experience that grace through you by what you show by your example so they can see Jesus in you and that's how they can have that grace and know it, and know that that's where it comes from because they can see it in you. And that's why they want to become a Christian later on. You know, uh, be faithful in prayer constantly, daily pray. You know, always have a routine. Uh, you know, about those you don't, even those you don't like or even care about for that matter. You should always pray for them. People you don't get along with, people have a lot of mental things going on, have a lot of different issues going on, but you should still pray for them because that's what we're told to do. Jesus prayed for those that persecuted him. All right? So even towards those 
also who seem to have who may be, you know, have been enemies with you. Always pray for them too. Because they need prayer. Trust me. They probably need it them times that more times than you do. That's why they're enemies with you. Or odds with you. Because they're not on the same channel. Or maybe not on the same page. For that matter. Alright. Live in harmony with one another. Alright. Now. We each sing our own note. And it is often a different one at that, as far as the note's concerned. It may mean adjusting any note a little bit in order that our notes sound good together in harmony. You know, so we all have a different note. You are all from different backgrounds. But we all need to kind of adjust things so we can work together. Because it takes all people to make the world go around. That's what that's saying there. So we don't have to just sing in unison here. No, we want to sing in harmony. We just need, we just have to appreciate the other person's note. So let's just put our notes together and sing together. You know, the, like the way Jesus would want us to sing. Working together in harmony. You know, without insisting, you know, now. It says, if you were really spiritual minded, you know, then you would sing my note. Okay. Point number three. Exercise a genuine act of grace that is towards everybody. Whether they're in the church body or whether they're outside the church body. Okay. Bless all those who persecute you. Okay. There are there are dual doors that are between the rooms of our very lives like there are in some hotel rooms. Leave your side always open for opportunities to help or serve in any way you can. That's what it's talking about there. As much as you can, always live at peace with everybody. If, if, if collisions occur, which often they do, the irritations must not come from a Christian. You, so you need to control those. You need to find a way to deal with those so they don't make you bitter or make you hard to get along with. You know, try to smoothen those out, those rough edges. And you know, how that helps is with a support system like your brothers and sisters in Christ. Or if you have Christian believers in your family, they can help encourage you too and give you ideas on that. Even I can give you some ideas on that. All right. Do not take revenge for revenge that happens to you. Okay. That's only That only belongs to God. That's his job. That's his domain. Not ours, okay? Overcome evil by doing good. Point number four. Display grace with a spirit or having a spirit that shows that you know that you are graced by God. Meaning you have the Holy Spirit and the grace you see that comes in you by your example, like we were talking about a little bit ago. Don't lack in any zeal. Always keep your fervor. You know, serve the Lord with the energy. You know, great tidings and thanksgiving. Don't give in to the enemy and don't give up. Okay? Be patient through and in afflictions. Okay? This is not the last chapter, though, of your life, though. Always be joyful in hope, because that's how that all happens. Through Christ with hope, that's how it all happens. In conclusion... I want you all to write down this verse. I want you to please read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I can't read it today, but write it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, since we all have hope, let's all act like it in the church body. Let's start treating people better. Let's start serving one another like Christ has said for us. Let's show that grace that we talked about. Faith is how we have grace. Without faith, there's no grace. There's nothing else. Faith is how it all starts. But let's share that grace and show that grace. Let's act like a true church. And let's show that church to other people outside the church as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, Father God, thank you for this message. Hope it's uplifting and fitting for people. Help them be encouraged and not be bitter and discouraged, but that they'll get more encouraged to serve you in even these hard and challenged times that we're living in right now. And that they'll be better served and adapted to help those who are less fortunate, the things they're not using that they have laying around, 
that they could give to someone else that may need it even though it's used but yet it works good and they can still give it without saying what they can get out of it what's in it for me and that they won't worry about what they get from you but they'll do it because that's what they're told to do and then god you'll bless them as you promise without them asking because they gave cheerfully lord help more people to become more cheerfully givers in these days help people not to worry about what they can get out of something that's not what it's all about you know i know that when i went into ministry lord that it wasn't about a bunch of money it wasn't about show sure wasn't about money i can tell you that but i knew it was about planting the seed and winning souls to christ which is worth more than all the money in the whole entire world lord please help people be moved to give to us lord so we can do the work for you more and more ways because of the money that comes in will be blessed and the money will go further and we'll be able to do a lot more in this community here in Harbor Square. And thank you, Lord, for everything you do. And Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Go out and fight the devil. And remember, I love you. And remember, Jesus does too. And please refer people to us. Share this video with your friends. And please, you can subscribe for free. Watch for free, but please donate. And if you want to send a donation to our snail mail address, that's, 80, that's 7110 New Hunter Road, apartment 423, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 2311. And you want to put New Hunter Church of Christ above that. On the check, you want to put Michael DeSilvis on the order of, you send a check. And down in the bar, down in there and where it says the description or what memo, you want to say New Hunter Church of Christ. Donation. You know, or you can give to the station here. Or you can help with the ministry here, with the other things that we do with the chat rooms and things. And uh, I hope that you all will feel led to give and be sacrificial in your giving and will help us out by being good stewards and sharing this time because we really do need it. We had a computer crash, and it would be nice to get a new computer so I could make better videos and like I was doing before it crashed. You know, we haven't had a computer for about a month. I've been using a tablet, thank the Lord. But the tablet's not meant to be a computer. You know, a computer can do way more. So I hope that we can get donations so we can do get that computer. Get a storage NAS that we've been needing for over a year now. And other equipment that we've been asking for. You can call me up at 804-789-9373 for more details. And I hope that you'll be led to help us out. Any way you can. God bless you. Shalom. And I'll see you next week. Bye. And uh, please subscribe down below. I love you. Stay strong in the faith. Read your Bible daily. And always be forgiven. And treat other people like Christ would treat you. See you later. Bye.